We will read verses 1 to 10 and then we will jump to Acts chapter 2. Dito muna tayo sa 1 Thessalonians chapter 1. Are you there? Okay, so 1 to 10, we are going to read this uh, responsibly. Paul and Silvanus and Timotheus unto the church of the Thessalonians, which is in God the Father and in the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Remembering without ceasing your work of faith and labor of love and patience of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ in the sight of God and our Father. For our gospel came not unto you in word only, but also in power, and in the Holy Ghost, and in much assurance, as ye know what manner of men we were among you for your sake. So that ye were ensamples to all that believe in Macedonia and Achaia. For they themselves shew of us what manner of entering in we had unto you, and how ye turned to God from idols to serve the living and true God. Okay, so we'll go to Acts chapter 2, and we will read from verse number 41 until number 47. Then they that gladly received his word were baptized, and the same day there were added unto them about 3,000 souls. And fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. And sold their possessions and goods, and parted them to all men as every man had need. Altogether, praising God and having favor with all the people, and the Lord added to the church daily, such as should be saved. Father, we thank you for your word. Forgive us, Lord, of our sins and make us worthy as we listen to your word, O God. May we, Lord, understand and then have the uh, grace that we need, O God, so that these things will be applied in our lives so that they will not be waste, uh, just a waste of time, O God, but they are going to be applied and be a part of our lives so that, Lord, in everything that we do, as we apply your word, we will be able, O God, to glorify you. Even, Lord, today, help me as I preach. Help your people as they listen. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you very much. So the title of our message is, What Our Churches Ought to Have. What Our Churches Ought to Have. So we have here two churches with different backgrounds. We can see that they are from two places in the word of God. One is located in Jerusalem where all members are Jewish. And one is located in Thessalonica where they are predominantly Gentile membership. Because, uh, but they have so many things in common. Even though they are, they are from different places and different backgrounds, we can see that so many things are in common with them. Number one, they have the same God. Amen. In 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse number 6, we can see that all of us, same people, we have the same God. We serve the same God. And the Bible says, and there are diversities of operation, but it is the same God which worketh all in all. It doesn't matter where you are. It doesn't matter what your background is. No matter what gift you may have, the Bible says that we have the same God. Amen. Not only that, but they have the same Savior. According to Ephesians chapter 5 
and verse number 23. There is only one Savior. There is only one name given under heaven. And that name is the name of Jesus. Amen. The Bible says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the Savior of the body. Amen. So you may be a Jew, you may be a Gentile, you may be from America, from Cambodia, from the Philippines. If you are saved, there is only one Savior who saved you, and that Savior is the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And then we, they have the same Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit that is in my heart today is the same Holy Spirit that is in your heart today. Ephesians chapter 1 and verse number 13, we can see that we were all sealed and we are all possessed and we are all indwelt by the same Holy Spirit promised to us by the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So that is why if you are saved today, we are kin and kindred because of the same Holy Spirit that is in our hearts so that we can understand each other. I went to Antique. I was able to be kindred with them. I went to Iloilo and I can feel the uh, relationship with them. I went to different churches, but I can see that there is only one spirit that is working and operating in our lives so that wherever you go, if there are Christians, you can see what we call being kindred with these people. Amen. Amen. Not only that, but they have the same salvation. Jude verse number 3 said, Of the common salvation. My salvation is the same. As your salvation, I am going to heaven. As you are going to heaven, there is no person in this room that is more saved than other people. Amen. Amen. So that is why you cannot boast of your salvation because the Bible says we have a common salvation. They have the same word of God. First Timothy chapter 2 verse number 15. They're studying the same word of God. They are dividing rightly the same word of God. That is why you cannot say that uh, you cannot grow the same as I am or other people because we have the same book that we are reading. We are the same book that we're studying. We have the same book that we are preaching and we have the same book that we're learning. So that whatever I can uh, glean and learn from this book is the same thing that you will learn and glean from your book. Amen. Kaya nga mga kapatid, huwag kang makontento na hindi ka lumalago kasi yung, yung, yung Bible na hawak mo is the same Bible that I am holding. The same Bible that I am reading and the same Bible that the Holy Spirit is illuminating our mind with. Kaya nga, there is no excuse if you are not going to grow as a Christian. And not only that, they have the same purpose and that is to glorify God. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 31, Whether therefore ye eat or drink or whatsoever you do, do all for the glory of God. The Bible says that God created all things. Why? For His glory. So I am here to glorify God. You are there to glorify God. God established the church that we can glorify Him. God saved us so that we can serve Him as we serve Him. Then God is glorified. If in your life or in my life, God is not glorified, then we are wasting our time here on earth. Amen. So that is the reason why you need to do something. You need to find something that you can do so that in your life, you can be sure that our God will be glorified. So here we can find from these churches the characteristics that our churches ought to have. What do we need to have? So that our church is the kind of church that will glorify the Lord. But before we go there, note, there is no perfect church. Amen. The church, churches in Jerusalem are not perfect. The churches in Thessalonica are not perfect. There is actually a saying that should you find a perfect church, please don't join the church. Because once you are there, the church will cease to be perfect. So there is no such thing as a perfect church. But even though there is no perfect church, there are churches that are closer to the ideal 
when it comes to doctrines and practice. Amen. And we need to strive to be as close to the ideal as possible. That is why unity is needed. Because we cannot achieve anything in this church if we are not going to be united. That is why God has given us the gift of forgiveness. Why? Because without forgiveness, we cannot accomplish anything in this church because whether you like it or not, somebody will commit wrong to another person. And when we do not know how to forgive or to apply forgiveness, then there is going to be living in our midst and the Bible says a little living, living at the whole lump. If there are two people here who are not in tune or who are not uh, uh, forgiving one another, then it will affect the whole church. If somebody here hated a brother or a sister, then it will hinder God's blessing to our church. Amen. That is why you may be only one, but you are one that can affect the whole body of the Lord Jesus Christ. So that is why striving, putting effort, applying effort, doing what we can in order to make our church a kind of church that can glorify our God. So we can see in what we have read in 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, the usual greeting of the Apostle Paul. But one thing that we need to notice is that among all the epistles of the Apostle Paul, he will always mention his apostleship. But here in Thessalonica, he did not mention his apostleship. Why? Maybe they do not question his authority. But he was questioned in Galatians. Galatia. He was questioned in uh, uh, Corinth, at Corinth and even at Ephesus. He was questioned by these people. That is why the Apostle Paul in his epistles need to uh, what you call defend his apostleship but not in Thessalonica. Why? Because you see it was the Apostle Paul who established his churches by the grace of God. Amen? And you see what will happen to people even though they are called Christians, even though they have a good motive, how easily they can be turned if they do not know the word of God. The Judaizers came and they questioned the authority of the Apostle Paul and then the people started to question the authority of the Apostle Paul. That is why in the church, without unity, people will try to uh, make their own following. Kapatid, Isang church lang ho tayo. Huwag kang kukuha ng tagasunod mo. Kasi lahat tayo tagasunod ng Panginoon. Yun lang yun. Wala nang iba. Even the Apostle Paul says, follow me as I follow Christ. It is his following Christ that has given him the authority to tell the people to follow me, to obey me, to do what I am telling you because everything that I am telling you are things that I have done in following and in obedience to the command of the Lord Jesus Christ. Kaya nga, isa lang, maaring matawag akong leader, maaring iba natatawag na leader, but we lead you to follow the Lord. We lead you to worship the Lord. We do not lead you to be our own Disciples, Why? We have no right whatsoever because there is only one Savior and that Savior is the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. So dapat ilagay natin mga kapatid dyan, sa ating mga kaisipan. So usual greeting of grace and peace. This is something that we need in our everyday lives. Amen. We need the grace of God without which we cannot even survive. Without which we cannot live the Christian life. And then, of course, we need peace because we are living in a world that is in chaos. Uh, things are deteriorating. Things are getting out of hand. The Bible even says that things will wax worse and worse before the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. It was even compared to the time of Noah when almost all people do not believe in God anymore. But 
We are living in a more dangerous time because during the time of Noah, they are at least vocal in their, in their belief that they do not believe in God. But what is happening in our time is that there are so many people who says that they believe in God, but there is no power of God in their lives. So that is even more subtle and that is even more deceiving that, than those people who will openly say that they do not believe in God. And then Paul thanked God for them because of their great testimony, because of their great faithfulness in the Lord. It is always good to talk about a church that is faithful in the Lord. Amen? Parang sa ano lang yan, mga funeral service. If the person who died is a, uh, a member of good standing, it is easy to preach. It is easy to make him an, an, an object lesson while you preach the word of God. But it is very, very hard to preach a funeral of a member of a church who do not have a good testimony. Because uh, it runs contrary to how a child of God should live his life in preparation for a death that is sure to come. So the same thing with the church. You see, whenever I go, I, I make mention of our church and I am proud in the Lord because of, of our church, because of the faithfulness of the members of our church when it comes to church attendance, your faithfulness when it comes to giving. Uh, but there is still uh, you know, something to be desired. There is still room for improvement. Still some are not faithful in what they're doing. So please be faithful. You cannot accomplish anything by not being faithful to God. You will not accomplish anything by disobeying the clear and simple command of God. You see, God will not ask you to do something that you cannot do. Because when God asks, He is the first one to provide what He is asking for. He will not ask you to give unless He has given you first. Hindi naman nuna sinasabi ng Diyos na ibigay mo hindi niya ibinigay. Ang pinabibigay ng Diyos yung binigay niya. That's why we believe in the whole concept of stewardship. That's why we believe in the whole concept of giving uh, volitionally, willfully, without any force, without any uh, uh, twisting of the arm. Why? Because it is required in a steward that a man be found faithful. And if we are not a faithful steward of God, then we are going to miss on the many blessings of God not to make us rich, not a desire to become rich in this world, but by the grace of God, to become rich in good works. Amen. Because that is the only thing that we can be rich in this world. Because all the money that may come to us are things that we will leave behind when we die. Sino na ba yung mayamang may nadala kahit kusing? Meron pang mga tao no unang panahon that when they die, uh, they want their gold to be buried with them. You try to unearth that and the gold are still there. They were not able to bring them. Not even one ounce of gold. Why? Because there is, uh, these things are not important where we are going, whether heaven or hell. Amen? Isa langit, daan lang yan eh nilalakaran yan eh. Sa impyerno, kahit maray ka pang ginto. Di ba may enjoy yan? That is why, while we are here on earth, if you are unsaved, you need to be saved. And if you are saved, you must serve God. Because that is where we are going to. And if we are not going to be faithful in serving God, then we are going to miss the uh, chance of receiving reward from the Lord, Jesus Christ. Amen. So these things are very important. Important. So we can see that these churches in verse number 3 are faithful in serving God. We can see that in uh, let's go to 1 Thessalonians again, chapter 1, verse number 3. There are three things here that are very important. Remembering without ceasing, Paul says, your work of faith, number 1. Number 2, your labor of love. And number 3, your patience of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. So we can see that there are evidences that God is working in the lives of these people. Because God was able to produce to them a faith that works. The one that I'm mentioning 
a while ago. If you have faith, genuine faith, that faith will definitely work. Because if there is no evidence of work, then that is not a faith that comes from God. Not only a faith that works, but they have a love that labors. You see, love will cause you to labor. And not only that, but they have a hope that endures. So you can see, these are three Christian virtues that the Apostle Paul often mentioned in his epistle. Look at 1 Corinthians 13, 13. We can see this. Paul wrote this even to the churches at Corinth. He says, And now abideth faith, hope, charity, which is love. These three, but the greatest of this is charity or love. So these are the three favorite Christian virtues of the Apostle Paul. But if you will notice the, uh, the arrangement here at Thessalonica, he put hope last instead of charity. Charity was put in the middle while faith was first. What's the point? Because the whole team of First Thessalonians is the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. And because of that, Jesus, uh, Paul put hope last in order to emphasize the second coming or the blessed hope that every Christian is looking for at the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. So that is the reason why the arrangement is not the same in 1 Corinthians. While in 1 Corinthians, love was put last. Why? Because the Corinthian Christians are lacking in love. Kulang sila sa pag-ibig. Yung mga nag-speaking in tongue, they look down at those people who are not speaking in tongue. Even during the Lord's Supper, they're making it a feast and then allow others to starve. To starve because they're not being given food. So we can see that there is not much love that is happening at Corinth. That's why Paul put charity last in order to make an emphasis to the Corinth that this is what they need. And the same thing with the churches at Thessalonica when he put uh, hope last in order. So let us look at these things. They have a faith that works. To them, faith is not just a matter of talk, but of action. Amen. James 2, 18. James chapter 2, verse number 18. The Bible says, Yea, a man may say, Thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show thee my faith by my works. You see, talk is cheap. What's important is the action that accompany your talk. That's why there is a saying, you need to walk the talk. When you say something, you need to prove it with your lives. There is a saying, practice what you preach. So, they do not believe that faith is something that you only talk about. Something that you only say, but they believe that faith is something that must be seen in your life. Amen. And it can be seen in them and even in the church of Jerusalem. When in verse number 42, the Bible says that they are working or worshiping together the Lord regularly in attending church services. As I have said, this is basic. And they continued steadfastly, consistently, without fail, in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayers. You see, can you see the unity of the church? They continued. It is not a what you call a, a one thing uh, event in their lives. But it is something that they do or continuously and consistently in their lives. A Christian who loves the Lord will be consistent in showing his love for his Savior. Amen. As God consistently loved us when God says I have loved you with an everlasting love so that is what God has given unto us so remember Sunday is the Lord's day remember
remember that, please. You tattoo that in your mind and in your heart that we have a lifetime commitment with God every Sunday. So do not schedule anything on a Sunday. It is, it is God's day. It belongs to Him. Do not schedule a visit on a Sunday. Do not uh, ask visitors to come on a Sunday except if you will bring them in the church so that they can listen to the Word of God. You see, if you love God and if you respect God, then you respect the day of the Lord. It is His day, not your day, not my day, not any day. It is a day that belongs wherein we gather together to worship the Lord. The Bible says in Hebrews 10, 25, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is. Are you one of those some? Are you one of those who have a rude, bad manner when it comes to worshiping the Lord? So, we need to have a faith that works. And worshiping God is an evidence of our faith. Don't you know that God the Father is seeking for such a worshiper? If you, if you will remember in John chapter 4 verse number 23, this is what the Bible says before he said that God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Before he said that, he said, But the hour cometh and now is when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth, for the Father seeketh such to worship him. So, hinahanap ka ng Diyos kapatid every Sunday pag wala ka. Eh, pastor, hinahanap ba ako? Hindi, andyan ka eh. Pero hinahanap niya ang isip mo kung wala. Hinahanap niya ang puso mo kung wala. You see, when we worship God, we worship God holistically with our mind, with our heart, with our spirit, with our body. That's why we were enjoined to give our body a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is our reasonable service. So when we worship God, we worship Him holistically. Kaya hindi pwede yung pastor wala man ho ako. Pero nandiyan ang spirit ko. You cannot say that. Because if your spirit must be there, your body will bring your spirit there. Amen? Alam naman, may astral projection ka pa. Iniwan ka ng spirit, umasandali, umatend. At ikaw ay, ano ginagawa? Nakatunga nga. Pag wala kang spirit, dapat wala kang buhay. So that is why we, we need to worship God holistically because, because the Father is seeking or looking for such to worship Him. That's why I, I, I told you a while ago, how can you say that you have genuine faith when you don't worship God? How can you say that your faith is a faith that will save you if that faith cannot bring you to the church? No, Pastor, my faith will bring me to heaven. Oh, but it cannot bring you to the church. It, it cannot bring you to the gathering place. But you trust that your faith will bring you to heaven. You see, I often said this and I will say it again, that we humans are the only creation of God that can deceive ourselves. Wala pang aso ako nakitang niloko niya sarili niya at pinaniwala niyang pusa siya eh. Ewan ko kung nakakita na kayo. Wala pa ako nakitang baka na pinaniwala niya na ibon siya. Baka pag lumipad niya, madapuhan ka. Wala pa. Pero yung tao na nilalang ng Diyos, he can deceive himself into believing that his faith is a genuine faith even though that faith does not produce works. So that people can see and glorify God in his life and believe that God is really the one who gave him that faith. Look at Acts chapter 2 verses 46 to 47. Look at the faith of these people. The Bible says, And they continuing, ano raw? Daily. 
Christ. Makinig nga kaya. Tayo po, Sabado linggo lang. Pahirapan pa. Only Saturday and Sunday. And we're even having a hard time continuing for the Lord when these people, they have needs, the same as we have. Needs, amen? They have cares in life, the same as we have cares in life. But in spite of this, they can continue daily with one accord. Meaning to say, all of them together in the temple and breaking bread from house to house did eat their meat with gladness and singleness. Ito yung blessed singleness. Singleness of heart. Hindi yung hindi ka nakapag-asawa kasi wala nang ligaw. Amen? Singleness of heart. Verse 47. Praising God together. Amen? And having favor with all the people and the Lord added to the church daily, daily, daily such as should be saved. Sabi sa akin, Pastor, how can you prove that the church is, are the people and not the building? I said because of uh, verse 47. And the Lord added to the church. If the church is the building, so you will be added, what will you be? Are you going to be the ceiling or the, uh, the wall? Or worse, you can be the toilet. That's why I said that the church are the people. Because you can be added daily into the church and become part of that body. Amen? Why? Because they are together. They are doing uh, things that are, and they are in common. Like in Nehemiah. We, we have been studying about Nehemiah. They were able to, to build the wall in no time. Why? Because the people had the mind to work. That's why we are going to put in our mind that we are going to work so that we can glorify God so that the church will, will grow by the grace of God and if all of us will, doing, will be doing that in one accord then in no time at all this church can glorify God. We may not grow much in number but we will grow in our faith and in the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And we're not going to be baby Christians that are very sensitive in so many ways other than in the good things of the Lord. Yung mga hindi nakakamayan, yung mga hindi napapansin, yung mga hindi na text, hindi na bati nung birthday niya. Nagtatampo na. Hindi tayo magiging ganun. Magiging mga matatatag tayong mga mana ng palataya. Hindi konting bagay. Ay nasasaktan tayo konting bagay. Uh, agad na tayong nag -re at itinadamay natin pati ang gawain ng Panginoon. You see, these people, they are into worshiping the Lord. Like David, he says in Psalms 122 verse 1, I was glad. Hmm. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. There is gladness. Why? I am going to meet the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. I am going to meet my Savior. I am going to meet my God. I will be with the people who loves my Lord. I will be with the people who think the same thing. I will be with the people who are serving the same master. I will be with the people who are singing the same song. I will be with the people who loves righteousness. Amen. And I was glad. There is a time in a week where I can be with this kind of people. Araw-araw, ayun ang papalad nyo, sa school nyo, karamihan sa inyo, kristyano, mga nagtuturo. E sa Pilipinas, hindi. Oh, sino-sino kasama nila? Kung sino-sino kausap nila, kung ano-ano ang naririnig nila. Kaya sabi ko, yung linggo, ito yung ating ano, ito yung araw na dapat pinakamimitit, pinakahihintay-hintay natin. Because at, at least in this particular day, we are going to be out of this world and into the realm of God. Tapos wala pang excitement. Naiinip pa. Na 
nasusuya pa. Nang gagalaitin na yung pastor sa pagpipreach. Tutulugan mo pa. Di ba? Why? Because there is no excitement. How can you fall asleep if you are excited? Sige nga. Talaga. Wala namang ganun. Ay, nakaka-excite. Tapos, tulog ka na. How can you, how can you even do that if you are in the spirit of worship? Look at these people. They are concerned with one another. Look at verses 44 and 45, kapatid. Anak ng anak. Acts chapter 2. Tino mo, and all that believe were together. Tino mo, together. And had all things common. See? Ano ginawa nila? Sold their possessions and goods and parted to all men as every man had need. They see to it that everybody will eat. They see to it that everybody will have a cloth to wear. They see to it that nobody is left behind. Why? There is concern. Why is it there is a concern? Because there is a faith that works. There is a faith that will do something regarding the need of a brother or a sister. You know what James said in a uh, I think also in James chapter 2, uh, if a brother or sister will come at night and is naked and destitute and uh, need, in need of food, and then you will say, go and be filled, go and be clothed. Can your faith save him? Gutom ako. O sige, humayo ka na at mabusog ka habang naglalakad ka. Nakahubad ako sige habang naglalakad ka, makakadamit ka. Hirap na hirap ako sa kaya ba naglalakad ka, giginhawa buhay mo. O wala kang ginawa. Ano sabi? What shall it profit? Ang pakinabang. Nang ganong klaseng pananampalataya. That is why a church must be a different entity than all the entities that are here in the word because it should be an entity where the grace of god is evident among the members kaya kapatid nakakalungkot yung nando doon ka na wala ka naintindihan niyo po mga kapatid nando doon ka na iba yung isipan mo nando doon ka na iba yung balakin mo hindi maganda because we cannot be blessed by God. So we need a faith that works. Not only that, but we need to have a love that labors. Look at verses 6 to 8 ng 1 Thessalonians. Chapter 1, 6 to 8. And ye became followers of us and of the Lord, having received the word in much affliction with joy of the Holy Ghost. They received the word in much affliction so that ye were in samples of all that believe in Macedonia and Achaia they became a model church a church that must be emulated a church that must be copied a church that's, that must be followed for from you sounded out the word of the Lord not only in Macedonia and Achaia but also in every place your faith to God's word is spread abroad so that we need not to speak anything. Pag sinabing, you know the churches at Thessalonica, we know. Praise God for them. You know how, no, no, you do, you do not have to say anything. Their reputation follow them. Amen? Why? Because they have a love that Labors, not only a faith that works, but a love that labors. Pasalo na pagkakaiba. Iba ho yun. Number one, listen, work emphasizes the result of the effort. When you put an effort, you emphasize the result of that effort. So when you work, then salary. That is the result of the effort. 
when you try to build and then you accomplish building what you are building that is the result of the effort while labor emphasizes the pain and weariness involved in the effort that even though it is hard that even though circumstances are unfavorable that even though you are the only one doing it that even though there is pain while you're doing it there is danger much like in the time of Nehemiah that even though they, they are at the peril of life but they keep on doing it why? because it is a labor of love amen there is an effort much effort than just work yan yung wala kang pamasahe aaten ka pa rin kahit maglakad ka lang labor of love yun hindi lang basta work yun yan yung halos wala ka na yung mga taga uh, Macedonia they gave beyond their power in deep poverty ano yan labor of love kasi madaling magbigay pag meron ka amen may isang million dolyar ka magbigay ka ng 10,000 sisiw pero yung wala ka na halos yun na lang ang natitira nakita mong may pangangailangan there is a great need and yet you sacrifice that is what you call labor of love even though it is hard, they received the word of God in much affliction, but even though they were afflicted, the word of God sounded not only in their place, but in other places. Why? Because there is love in their heart, and if there is love, nothing can stop you from doing what you should do. Tino mo, may trabaho ka? Kailangan mo kasi trabaho para mag-survive ka? Okay lang. Pero may trabaho ka, hindi sapat, pero mahal mo, tuloy ka pa. Di ba? Labor of love. There is what we call, in, in spite of pain and weariness, your effort will still be the same because of love. And it is love that can move us to do something great for our Lord. Because it is love that made Him did great something great for us because of love God the Father gave His only Son because of love the only Son gave His only life and because of love the Holy Spirit gave us eternal life don't you know what the Bible says for the love of Christ constraineth us ano sa Tagalog pumipilit sa atin yung bang extra shove yun yung love yun yung labor of love. Do you know why? Because they came to realize how great is God's love for them. Sabi ko nga, the reason why, you know, our church uh, experience, our worship experience is just common, normal, natural, not special. Do you know why? Because we are not in awe of God anymore. Hindi na tayo amazed sa Diyos, mga kapatid. Let's be honest. Hindi na. Common na lang to. This is just a common thing that is happening in our lives every Saturday and every Sunday. And there is nothing special about this anymore. We do not even think of the awesomeness of God anymore. We do not even think of the privilege that today and every Sunday we can worship God in spirit and in truth. Hindi na. Wala na yun. Exercise na lang ito mga kapatid. And you know what's happening? We are wasting our time until the day that we will die. Because there is no more appreciation of God's glory in our lives anymore. Kaya nga sa worship service, iba na kukuha pang mag-usap habang nagwa-worship service. Bakit eh? Wala namang kwenta ang Diyos eh. Eh ano ko na ang Diyos eh? Ano ko nakikita ako ng Diyos? 
Eh ano? Kaya merong alam niya, meron siyang dapat ibigay. Alam na alam niyang binigay sa kanya ng Diyos at alam na alam niyang katiwala siya pero hindi niya ibibigay. Bakit? Walang kwenta ang Diyos sa akin. Kaya alam niya pa, eh ano? I don't care. Hmm. Di ba? Mga kapatid? Kahit kami, kahit ako. Tatayo ako. Minsan hindi ko mang paghahandaan yung ituturo ko, yung ipipreach ko. Bakit? Eh kahit ano naman ang sabihin ko, yung parin yun eh. Kaya pinag-uusapan na lang mga kapatid, eto eh. Sino ang meron pang pagrespeto at paggalang sa kadakilaan ng Panginoon? Whether we ascribe to God what is due to God or not, it will not diminish his being God. But it will greatly diminish us as being God's children. Bakit? Siya ang final judge. Siya ang haharapin natin. And we are going to give an account to Him. And I, I do not know, I do not know, but, but maybe uh, at the judgment seat of the Lord Jesus Christ of, or if there is a one-on-one -on -one, uh, what you call judgment, and and we will be asked by him why you did not do this, you did not do that, and we will give our reason because of you know I I am a mother of four, I'm a father of four, and there are needs and all of this, and and, and, and you know sometimes I'm I'm already physically tired and all of these things, and and I do not want to to uh, I want to take care of my body because if I will get sick, who will take care of my family and all of these things? I believe God will show on that screen. The sin when he was hanging on the cross of Calvary, agonizing in pain because of our sin, and he said, I did all of this to you and did not even think of myself, not even once. Because while I was hanging on the cross, I was thinking about you. And then all, all we do is think about ourselves. Pastor, hindi ka ba guilty niya? Guilty ako, kaya nga alam ko eh. Guilty ako eh. Kaya nga sinasabi ko eh. Eh, hindi ka maganda example, Pastor. Ginagawa ko ng example para ma-realize natin. Kasi baka akalain nyo, Pastor, kala mo naman kung sino ka, kala mo naman nagagawa mo, hindi nga nakakahiya nga sa Diyos tayo eh. Pero is there a solution? Yes, there is. Let us labor with love for God. Always being conscious of who He is and what He has done for us and what He wanted to accomplish in this world and thinking about those people to whom He died for, those people who are so ignorant and, and so sinful that they do not know their right hand from their left, those who are blinded by the devil, those who are living, and yet is just one breath away from being thrown into an eternal hell. That is what is trying to make us realize, and I hope I can always realize that and be conscious of that in my life. Why? Because if not, I will merely go through the motion in doing these things. Na wala na lang kabuluhan. Labor of love. You know, because these people realize how much God loved them, then they also realize that God has the right to do this. Matthew 22, verse number 37. He has the right to do this. Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. He has the right because He loved us so much. Parang ganito yan eh. Kahit naman tayo, ganyan eh. Di ba pag minahal mo ng todo-todo, ng lubos-lubos, gusto mo gantihan ka ng todo-todo at lubos-lubos din na pagmamahal. Tama mali. Pero tayo, kadalasan, selfish yung ating motive. Pero ang Diyos hindi eh. Because God knew that if we will love Him with all our heart, and with all our soul 
and with all our mind, then we will be in a great situation. Because God knew how to bless His people. And He will be the one to take care of us. That's why when God demanded that we must love Him more than our family, more than our jobs, more than our possessions, more than our money, more than our ambition, and more than ourselves, He asked Peter, Lovest thou me more than this? And He's asking us the same question. Do we love Him more than this? That's why I, 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 I can just imagine what Abraham went through when God asked him to sacrifice his only son. Magkasakit lang yung anak ko. Natataranta na ako eh. Oh. Pag may sakit yung mga anak ko, yung thermometer, kung makapagsasalita lang, ano ka ba? Ilang segundo pa lang ang nakakaraan? Tinitignan mo na naman ang grado ng sakit ng anak mo. Why? Kasi mahal natin eh. Amen? Pero ang tanong, minahal na ba natin ng Diyos ng higit doon sa ganong pagmamahal? What will you do to preserve your life? Did we love God more than what we will do to preserve our lives? Yung kasi yung mga bagay kapatid na kailangan po nating sagutin sa ating buhay. So they have a faith that works. Amen? They have a love that labors and not only that they have a hope that endures why do they have that that hope why do you hope why do you have hope listen our hope is different from the, the hope that is mentioned in the bible our hope is uncertain oh I hope uulan mamaya hindi ka sure but when the bible used the word hope it is something that is sure Something that you can count on. You can put that in the bank, so to speak. So, why do they have this kind of hope? Because they know that God knows what is best for them. If I believe in the person that is asking me to do this, then I am going to bet all because I trust him. That is our hope our hope is sure our hope is steadfast we have according to Titus a blessed hope that one day all of these things will stop that no matter how hard it is we will endure through all of these things Paul told Timothy endure hardness as a good soldier of the Lord Jesus Christ. Why? Life is hard because life is a battle. Walang battle na madali. Amen? Lalo na ang kalaban natin, expert. Ilan taong ka palang tayong nabubuhay? Ilan taon nang nabubuhay ang kalaban natin? Ilan taong palang natin natututunan ang salita ng Diyos? Ilan taon na niyang pineperfect yung kanyang trade? Anong laban natin? If not for the hope that we have. That no matter what happens when we are in the heat of the battle, God promised that He will never leave us nor forsake us. God promises that He will put words in our mouth. God promises that nothing will happen to you unless it was permitted by God. So that is our hope. That is why we endure. Because of this hope. You see, not only that, we know that God will provide what we need, not only here on earth, listen, but they are already reserved in heaven. That is why we should not put more emphasis on what we can get here on earth than what we will receive in heaven. We already have an example, Solomon. He tried to find joy and happiness through wine with women, with wealth, with wisdom and all of these things. And then he went to only one conclusion in his life. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole, of the whole, of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments for this is the whole duty of man. Sige, 
Ah, pastor, kung sampu lang asawa ko, masaya ako. Lalo na siguro, pastor, kung dalawang po. Eh, isang nga, hirap ka ni. Pag isang asawa mo, dadalawa pa lang ang biyanan mo. Di mo na alam kung ano ang mangyayari sa buhay mo. Mag-asawa ka pa ng sampu, dalawang pong biyanan. Ah, Jalil, kaya mo dalawang pong biyanan? Yung kakamay ka, maroon ka palang kamamay. Yung mga tipong ganun. Uupo ka, eh, hindi pwede, andyan yung aso ko. Sa parang yun! Eh, kung dalawang pong ganun. Sabi niya, wine! Hinanap ko sa alak. Lahat ng alak natin man niya. Nakita ko sa Pinas, eh, tandoy pala ang number one ram in the world. Kaya pala Pilipino lang nakakakilala sa tandoy. Sabi niya, wala! Natikman ko lahat ng alak, wala! Ano pa? Yaman! What did the uh, Queen of Sheba says? The half was never told regarding the wealth of Solomon. He was able to build a temple made with gold. But still, there was no joy. Still, there was no happiness. Why? God did not create us to have that kind of fullness of joy and happiness in this world. But one day will come when the Lord Jesus Christ comes again and He will rapture us from this earth. We will be in heaven together with Him and we will experience the fullness of joy forever. Amen. Yun yung araw na yun. Hindi ngayon. Ngayon hirap. Ngayon pasakit. Ngayon, you cannot really understand what is going on in our world today, but we persevere through that. Why? Because we have a hope. Yun yung pagkakaiba ng may pag-asa ka. Kesa dun sa wala. And sometimes, you know, you can, you can hear, you can watch, you can see inspirational stories of people because of their hope were able to surmount almost impossible circumstance in life and yet most of them are unbelievers and then Christians will raise their hands up in surrender at a slightest discomfort or hardness that we experience in life hindi na ako masaya rito hindi ko na gusto nangyayari hindi na ako komportable puro hindi ko ba alam nandiyos yung mga kapatid puro dahil yung kung ano gusto mo don't, you realize, don't, don't we realize that, that most of our decisions is because of what we feel not what God wants kaya ang dali natin mag flip eh punta ka doon ay hindi doon ay hindi dito ay hindi do ay hindi do ay hindi balik ko ay hindi hindi, hindi ka pa nakakapunta sa hindi, hindi mo na alam kasi ano gagawin mo why because you look at yourself and when you look at yourself you will want comfort but when you look to God it doesn't matter what it doesn't matter what it may be prison and Paul and Peter and Silas can sing inside the prison because they are not affected by circumstances their joy is in the ever presence and power of the Lord parang ganito yun eh kahit sa kulungan basta't kasama ko Panginoon kesa naman nasa laya na wala ang Panginoon ganun yun eh hindi lang ako agreed sa isang pastor talaga sumobre eh. ako kanya kahit sa impyerno basta kasama ko ang Diyos pupunta ko ron sabi ko, kayo na lang. <laughs> Wag naman sa impyerno. <laughs> Hindi naman. Wala nga ang presence ng Panginoon dun eh. Kaya nga sabi, from the presence of God. Minsan sumusobra tayo ng init eh. <laughs> Yung bagong ligtas nga, sobrang init sa soul winning. Kahit daw aso, we witness sa niya. <laughs> sabi ko, sige nga, subukan mo. Pag hindi ka kinagat mo ang iyong ulo, pikit mo yung mata. Pag hindi ka kinagat niyan. Amen? So, they have a hope that endures. Why? 
Why do we have to do these things for God? Why do we have to hold on to this hope? Because ladies and gentlemen, according to 1 Peter chapter 2, verse number 11, we are merely, what? Pilgrims and strangers in this world. We are just passing through. Amen? Walang pilgrims na habang dumadaan, nag-build ng malaking bahay. Dadaan lang ako eh, paggawa ako ng malaking bahay. Kasi iiwan ko eh. Bibili ako ng katakot-takot na kayamanan at ilalagay ko dyan. Kasi aalis na ako eh. Hindi We prepare for our destination. We enjoy the journey. That, that is what a pilgrim as and a stranger can do if they have hope in their lives. Amen. God already took care of everything that we need and more than what we need. 1 Corinthians 2.9 but as it is written, I had not seen. No yung panakita, hindi ko panakita. Nor ear heard. Maraya ka ng kwentong narinig, ha? I, I believe you already heard too many stories about greatness, about wealth, about impossible wealth of people. But even if you have heard that, what God has prepared, cannot even be compared. It is far more beyond that. Neither have entered into the heart of mine. Think of the greatest thing that you can think of. It is nothing compared to what God had prepared. The things which God had prepared for them that love Him. So what is the real issue? You love God. You love God. With all our hearts, our mind, our soul, our strength. We love God because those that love Him, He prepared something that they cannot even imagine, imagine possible where we are going to be with the Lord forever. That is why we have a hope that endures. Amen? That's why we endure all things. No matter how hard it is. I I hope this is not just something that we are talking about. I hope this is something that even if the Lord will allow us to experience something that we are going to do in our lives, that we will endure things because of our love to the Lord. Amen? Amen. So those are the three things. Number one, faith that. Number two, number three, Okay, now that we are finished with the introduction, we will go to the message. So, what are the things that our churches ought to have in order for us to glorify God in our lives? Amen? Oh, galing sa ilong yung amen, no? May kasama pang uhog. Amen, God. Amen. Amen. Eh, madali lang ito. Bibilisan ko, eh? Amen? Okay. Kasi, kailangan nun natin, mga kapatid, makita, eh. Kailangan natin mapag-aralan. Kailangan natin maunawaan, eh. Nang sa ganun, eh, uh, magkaroon tayo ng talagang uh, magandang paglilingkod sa Diyos. Sa pinakamabilis na paraan. Verse 7, they have exemplary lives. They are example in receiving the Word of God. Verse number 41, they gladly receive the Word of God. Verse number 42, they continued in the apostles' doctrine. Why? Because they know the importance of the Word of God. So question, do we know the importance of the Word of God? What is the Word of God? John 17, 17, thy Word is truth. John 10, 35, the words of God cannot be broken. Psalms chapter 12, verse number 6, the Word of God are pure words, purified at the, uh, uh, like a silver, tried at the furnace of the earth, purified seven times, meaning to say complete purity. Psalms 119 verse 89, it is settled in heaven. That's why we will be judged 
according to the word of God. In John chapter 12, verse number 48. And then, uh, Psalms 138, verse number 2, God has magnified His word more than all His name. Di ba mahalaga ang pangalan ng Diyos? Sabi ng Panginoon, I magnify my words more than all my name. Do you know why? Because God is His word. He is bound to do whatever He said He will do. And then number two, His word, His living word, is His Son in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's why He magnified His word more than all His name. So, that's why, ladies and gentlemen, spend time in studying the Word of God. Amen? In verses uh, 8 to 9, they were example in applying God's Word in their lives. Why? They became separated for God. Number two, they give according to the desire of their heart put there by the love of God. Verse number 47, their example in evangelism because every day, people are being added to the church and every day, people are getting saved. And then lastly, they were example in waiting for the Lord to come. In Luke chapter 19, verse 13, there is an important phrase here when Jesus said, occupy till I come. Meaning to say, God went for a while, but He will come back. And while we are waiting for Him to come, He says, occupy till I come. It simply means work until I come. Serve until I come. Do what you're supposed to do until I come. Because before the master went, he gave talents to his servants. And he said, occupy, work, employ until I will come again. It means that they are actively waiting for the coming of the Lord. That's why they continue despite of trials and temptations and affliction. They know that all of these things will work in order for their faith to become stronger. You see, the infirmities that we, uh, uh, trials and temptation that we experience in life are the ones that made our faith stronger. That's why people who experience so much adversities in life will thrive even in the midst of problems. Hindi nga lang totoo, pero nasabi yun ni Freddy Aguilar, tawanan mo ang yung problema. Natawa lang yan pag may problema. Bakit? Alam na nila, if there is a problem, it is God's opportunity to show Himself powerful. Because of the storm, they saw the power of God in calming the storm. Because of hunger, they saw His power to feed more than 5,000 people. Because of sickness, they saw His power to heal. Because of death, they saw His power to resurrect people's lives. So these adversities are opportunities for us to see how powerful our God is. That is why they welcome all of these things in their lives. Anong prayer natin, Panginoon? Ilayo niyo ako sa lahat ng mga bagay na ito ipinalalayo lang tayo sa temptation pero hindi sa mga trials, hindi sa mga problema hindi sa mga bagay na ito kasi ito yung nagpapatibay sa atin and why will God withhold something that will make our faith strong in the Lord so you see, that is why even though the word is getting worse and worse even though it may seem to, to become darker and darker, it doesn't matter. Because we know that even though it is dark, there will always be light at the end of the tunnel. Even though it is stormy, there will always be a silver lining. Even though the rain will pour, then one day that rainbow will come. We may have tears in the night, but joy cometh in the, wor in the morning. The word might be getting worse and worse. But you see, at the darkest time is the time where we appreciate most a ray of light. Do you nakikita? May power. Normal lang, di ba? Subukan mo mawala ng power. 
Biglang nagkailaw. Ano reaksyon? Ay! Sigawan yung mga tao. Andun yung tuwa. Andun yung kagalakan. Why? Kasi nagkaroon ng liwanag sa gitna ng kadiliman. And that is what God is telling us to do. He already said that this world is not going to become better. So we need to be prepared. This world is not going to conform to what God wants to do because the God of this world is the devil. But one thing that is going for us, it will not last forever. Because one day Jesus will come. Yung inawit nga nila. When the Lord Jesus Christ comes, there will be no more pain. There will be no more sorrow. There will be no more problems. There will be no more night. And we are not going to grow old. Amen. Yung mga senior citizen, pagbalik ng Panginoon, teenager ka ulit. Yan ang aking naranasan sa Pilipinas. Sir, doon ako kayo. Bakit ka ako? Senior. Sama ng tingin ko. Sabi ko, Panginoon, tulungan niyo ako na tumibay ang pananampalataya ko sa mga oras na ito. Mas matindi ang naranasan ni Maribel habang nasa service. Pagkatapos ng service, sabi ng katabi niya, Ma'am, buntis ko kayo. Sabi ni Maribel, ngiting aso, lola na ako eh, may apo na ako. <laughs> but one day, one day, all of this will be no more. Amen? Amen? That is why we need to do all of these things. Why? Because these are the only things that we can do here on earth while we are waiting for the coming of the Lord. Ladies and gentlemen, listen as I end. This is the challenge. I'm not asking you to stop what you're doing. Be faithful in what you're doing. I'm not asking you not to help those people in the Philippines that are looking up at you. Help wisely and spiritually. I'm not asking you to not put a great premium on this life. What I'm asking you is treat heaven more than how we are treating earth. And we invest more in the place where we are going to live forever than in this place where we are merely passing through. So I hope and I pray that we will realize this so that like the churches in Jerusalem and Thessalonica, each and every one of us, especially the Lord, can be proud of because our faith will be seen and will be heard wherever we go. Not for us to be lifted up by people so that people will glorify God. Because if ever that this church is going to be a good example, it can only be done by the Lord Jesus Christ. Not any of us. So I hope and I pray that we are going to exemplify all of these things in our lives so that we can glorify God as we continue living in this world. Shall we stand up, please? While every heads are bowed, we have heard the...